This tutorial will show how to use the extra doff math functions in the exporter to create a slick piston and cylinder animation when the gear door opens. The gear door will control the rest of the animation. So we start off with a doff on the gear door. We have two other doffs, one for the cylinder and one for the piston. The doff for the piston is attached to the gear door or the doff simply using the linking tool in 3D Studio Max. So when this rotates, the doff here follows it. Now there are certain things that we know about this setup already. We know the distance between these two doffs. We know the distance between these two. We also know the angle that this doff will be rotating at. From this we can work out the angles of these two in order to make sure that they still point at each other. So let's just calculate the, the angle between this doff and these two. So using the protractor tool, I line it to the doff here and then that gives us the initial angle between here as 29.1277 degrees. We will need that because when we rotate this doff, it's obviously going to start at zero and then increase. But we're going to use that angle to calculate the other angles. Angle of this doff is plus the initial angle. So for instance, if we extend this doff 30 degrees, it will be 30 degrees plus what this initial angle was. The 29.1277 degrees. So we can set up an area, so add a render control node to the DOF and choose from the type the add. We're going to set the result to be a scratch variable and we'll set it to scratch variable 0 so we can store that as a variable we can use later on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take what the value of DOF0 is and we're going to add that to the, the angle 29.1277 degrees. However, we need to enter that in here as radians. So, let's convert this. And then we'll copy that straight into here. Okay, so now the value of the DOF, sorry, of the scratch zero variable will be whatever the angle of the DOF is plus the angle that is already existing there. Let's remove the uh, protractor. Okay, so that's going to give us the angle between these two. Okay, or this angle here. Oops. So from that, we can then work out, say, what the angle here is. So I've now got this as set up as DOF2. And I'm going to add to that uh, F4 render control. And I'm going to use the angle A from angle B, side A and side C. Because we're finding angle A, this being angle A, side A is the side opposite this angle, which will be this side here. Side C, okay, will be this side here. We know that because we're getting the angle by using angle B, which is going to be this angle here. So side B is the side opposite that angle. So this will be side B here. Therefore, that must be side C, which is good because we know the length of this side and the length of that side. So let's just find out what these lengths are. 
we'll use a tape so we can see the length of side C is 24.804 and the length of side A is 7.419 so in this DOF the first parameter is angle B and angle B is going to come from the scratch zero variable okay, which we set up here the then need to put in the two sides so the second variable is side A and we know side A to be this side so if we just take the helper we say 7.419 sorry 7.419 uh, feet and then the second or oh, sorry third parameter is the distance of side C which is that the distance of side C is 24.804 so from that it's going to calculate the angle and we want it to put the angle into DOF2 We then need to calculate the angle of this DOF. So again, add a render control node. And again, angle A from angle B, side A, side C. This is going to be angle A. This is, going, this is angle B, the one that we know. So we know that side A is this one because it's opposite angle A. And we know that side C is this one because this side is side B because it's opposite ang angle B, so that it must be side C. So, again, the first parameter being the angle, okay, which we've got as scratch zero already. The second parameter being side A, okay, now this time it's 24.804, and side C. The smaller one, uh, 7.419. Okay, we now need to set up the output of that goes to DOF1 because this is DOF number one. And let's just export this just to do a test. Okay, now we can see that although the piston and the cylinder are actually moving, they're sort of in the wrong place. Now, the reason is, if we calculate the angle here, okay, we get an angle of a starting point where this DOF is zero, of about 11 degrees. So what's happening is this DOF is already rotating approximately 11 degrees. However, that's then going to move this into the wrong position. So what we do is we need to align this so that it's pointing to the... Um, the, the door doff so that it removes that initial angle so I'll just add a look at so that it looks at there and we need to do the same for this item as well so that it looks at this doff now let's export it again okay looking better we can see the door, the cylinder, the piston, just going to wireframe, we can confirm that. And if we rotate DOF0, we can see that the, the cylinder and the piston follow each other.